The entire was pretty hooked up back in the day. So. Yeah. And a couple of my friends were club promoters, so we would always go late and then drive in, like really slow in front of the line. <laughs> I had one friend that would always like stick his head out the window. He'd always shit shotgun, cause like he was my, like one of my closer friends, and he's the first guy I always picked up, so he always got shotgun. And then he would just be like, slah, slah, and he'd be like, hey, what's up, dude? Hey, what's up, girl? Hey, hey, what's going on? And he was like a promoter, so he'd always like cut the line, you know. So he'd always just like drive really slow, and then he'd like walk up, and he'd, he'd make a point to walk up and down the line like twice. Before he'd go in, before we just to make sure everybody saw him, just to make sure everyone saw him. (laughs) So funny. That was that was the best days, though. You know, that was the most fun. Just being a goofball. Parties. I remember some parties like we would go. You know, like you you and your friends have like we y'all buy rims, right? Yeah. And then um, like some parties, like some of my friends, we switch just two rims. No, that's fine. Because our theory was like, when you roll by slow, yeah. like in front of the party one way, and you slow by, you roll by the other way, you know, it might look like a different car. <laughs> <laughs> Even though it was just the rims. Yeah, it's just the rims. <laughs> We're straight dorks, man. <laughs> <laughs> we, still, we still are dorks, but. Matthew Hunt and welcome to my shop Under Pressure Fabrication and Distribution. We mainly specialize in uh, Japanese import supercharged turbocharging. Turbocharging is our specialty. Uh, The name Under Pressure hence motors under pressure. This car here is a 1994 Toyota Supra single turbo T6. This is a bolt-on kit, a little bit of our fabrication work, making it look a little nicer, the air box, the custom inlet, uh, the dual blow-off valves on the throttle body side. Um, but also, we are also a shop in the mines that we will turbocharge anything. You bring us your lawnmower, have enough money, we will put a turbo on it, as hence here, 63 Sport Fury. It has a 426 Hemi in it. If you take a little look closer, you'll notice four HKS 3037S ball bearing turbos. Uh, but this is a good crossover of showing, you know, taking a Japanese market part and putting it on a domestic motor. We are leading wholesalers for HKS, Turbonetics, Spearco, iBot, and Trax. This is our warehouse that we work out of. Uh, what's so great being here in Southern California, we are very centrally located to all the major manufacturers. So we uh, carry quite a bit on hand, but do not have to hold a lot of inventory because we can go on daily runs and pickups to places like HKS, so the product barely has to sit here. It gets shipped right out. This is the reason we're doing this, is to keep us on edge and keep us in tune with all the new products that are coming out. We are more of a fabrication shop, but we like to work with the BPU products as they come out, and that's the best way of knowing, is working hand in hand with the manufacturers. Should I hope these not taking us to a residential area? My name is Manny Jessinger. This is my 1994 Supra. We're gonna go take it out. Just could get stupid a little bit, go sideways, burn up some rubber. All out, try to get arrested today. It's my stress relief. Get in the car, close the door, everything else disappears. No problems, no stress, no family. It's just the car and me. Just go out there and have a good time. And uh, that's what it's all about. The car is a 1994 Toyota Supra. It should be about a thousand at the crank. Looking at about 850, 860 to the rear wheel. Few things done to it. Went ahead and uh, upgraded the turbo. The turbo's from uh, RPS with the RPS manifold, innovative turbo, innovative wastegate, and the RPS downpipe. Most of the work, custom work, is done by JC School from Under Pressure. It's got a 120 shot direct port nitrous. The car is uh, built for road racing, it's got a custom coilover setup, forged line wheels, it's got a full Sea West kit, Sea West GT wing, carbon fiber, Momo seats, the interior is done by Stitchcraft, 
including the sub box. Uh, it's a driver's car. It's uh, something that gets driven a lot. It's got about 120,000 miles on the car. Most of the, most of that is fairly hard miles. I don't baby it. I don't abuse it. But it's uh, it's a car that gets driven a lot. It, it gets used a lot. <laughs> I lost this car for 30 days about six months ago. That was my first speed contest ticket. Lawyer fees, ticket, and everything was said and done is a little over $5,000. And then impound fees because you gotta pay it for 30 days. Plus, uh, the lawyer charged me, uh, what, what did he charge? He charged me almost $2,000 to do it. And then uh, the ticket, he got it pleaded down to a speeding ticket. They still charged me like $980 for the ticket. When I add it up, I'm like, uh, maybe it's not worth it. You know what I mean? Did you always want to have it set up like this or? You know, I kind of sit home and go through my head what I want to do and I come come over here and tell Jesse, uh, this, you know, like the nitrous bottles and stuff like that. Yeah. So man, I just talk about it and see what works, what doesn't work. Yeah. Sports compact car. I heard about it the first year they came out with it. We just went up and did some uh, car show drag racing and autocross, but I ended up taking uh, first place on the autocross, first place in uh, the drag racing, went home with two trophies, I think I came in overall second place. Second year they changed the format a little bit, a lot more tests, just really testing for the for real street car. We went at it for three, four days, and at the end of the, the whole thing, came in second, lost, uh, lost to a Ferrari. Trying to go back this year, it's already in the, in the magazine. Um, hopefully I'll get picked, I want to go back. Uh, came in second two years in a row. There's no excuses. If this year I lose, that's because I can't drive. Not because the car couldn't perform. My name is Manny. Thanks for checking out my car at Under Pressure. You're going to see us again in the future. There's good grip videos. You're going to do something crazy. There's more good things to come, so stay tuned. Hello Motor X. No. No. I'm sorry, we don't offer test drives. No. No, you can't. No, no, you can't even wash our cars. No. No, you want to no, you can't touch the cars. <laughs> no. No, just No, sorry. Since 1998, Motorex was the first and has been the only company in America to import Nissan Skylines into the U.S. and make them legal for street use. Motorex currently stocks and sells numerous models of the Skyline, including the R32, R33, and R34. Motorex offers all Skylines in the GTS or rear-wheel drive single turbo version and of course, as the almighty twin turbo all-wheel drive GTR. On any given day, you could go down to Motorex and see any number of key people in the import industry hanging out. What? And that's Steve from Nissan North America and Alex from Pfizer and washing my car. <laughs> Good help is so hard to find these days. from Nissan North America took us out for a drive in an R33 Skyline GTR. My name is Steve Mitchell and I work for Nissan North America and I'm in charge of their National Service Center.
three. Well, this one has got a fair number of upgrades done to it, so it's probably got a bit more power than my 32, but I'm really familiar with driving right-hand drive now. It only takes a couple hours to get used to it. You don't really have any issues. The only thing that uh, is a little bit tough is left turn pockets at intersections. Those are sometimes a pain, but other than that, it's a great car to drive. A lot of fun. Um, I'm not sure what brand this is. I have ground control. Uh, coilover suspension in mine. It's their advanced design shocks and they have root, I set mine up for circuit racing so it's real stiff suspension and this feels a little bit bouncy like this, the shocks are set on full soft so if it were my car I'd probably do a few little changes to it but uh, overall it's, it's pretty good. What's your take on Skyline? They should have been here from the beginning. I really like Skylines. I've been a fan of them since 89, since the first GTR, well, modern GTR came out, and always wanted one. And I finally got the opportunity to buy one about a year ago. What do you think it's going to take to bring um, Skyline to America, uh, legally as, as a regular car? Basically, it's just got to be the powers that be within Nissan decide that um, they want this car for the U.S. market. And once somebody makes that decision, then uh, it'll happen. Yeah, I've been lucky. You know, I mean, I got great support of parents. And Lucky for me, like I've made good friends and you know, I mean behind the scenes, you know, there's a lot of people that make me who I am. I've been very lucky to do a lot of things that I've wanted to do and, and you know, luckily for me they've worked out. I'm just happy to be where I'm at. You know? It's like, I don't know, I mean I get that a lot actually. People are like, dude, I thought you were going to be an asshole. I'm like, why? You know? <laughs> just like another guy that loves cars, just like, you know, like all of us. Like you said, sometimes you start to work and you forget about why you're in it. Yeah. Is that, and I think that's sad. Like that's, I don't know. And hopefully I'll, you know, I don't know. Hopefully I'll never get to that point. I mean, of course, like when you're in the media, people say things about you that you have no control over and then people misconstrue it, you know? That's always like, going to happen. Yeah, there's like people that say like, yeah, you said you started the whole industry. I'm like, what? I never said that. <laughs> it's like, okay, yeah, I started the whole industry. Yeah. It's just weird how sometimes you know, people just say, is it working now? You know? You say that? You say this and you said that. It's like, I did. <laughs>
to shoot for the calendar in lingerie. My next big step, um, I just did MTV Dismiss. So I'm gonna be on the dating show, acting really stupid. And um, I wanna do more of comedy. I wanna do some of like Jackie Chan, you know, like something funny with Tom food. I'll be able to kick somebody, but that kind of deal I wanna do. My turn on is I love uh, massage, any kind of massage. Like sometimes my dog give me a massage, he just step on me and I just love it. Foot massage, hand, anything, I love it. Turn off is dirty nail. I don't like dirty nail. That's, uh, I don't know. I think anybody with dirty nail is, like you're supposed to be able to make sushi and then with dirty nail, I don't know, it's not, it's just not sexy for me. Hey, this is Aiko Tanaka from AikoAiko.net. You are watching RIP Video. I'm Craig Lieberman. I am the youth marketing manager for McGuire's, basically a sick car person like probably everybody watching this. Buying the Skyline was a pretty easy choice. Once you go from a Supra to another car, what else are you going to buy? The Skyline was perfect. It's very hard to get in this country. Um, they're a lot of fun when they're modified. They're very unique. You don't see them at stoplights. And when they're modified, they're just great cars. I think everybody would like to have a Skyline at some point in their hobby. I'm really satisfied with this car. It's got everything I want, uniqueness, it's fun to drive, great breaker, it's showy enough for me. You know, it's a bit of a compromise, but uh, I, I couldn't see getting into anything else right now. You know, three, three years from now, who knows? Hi, I'm Craig Lieberman. You're watching Grip Video. Velside USA. I'm here to introduce our Velside Titanium Teardrop Exhaust. This particular one right here is for the RSX, however it's for the Type R. Uh, basic functionalities of exhaust is to free up the power of your car. The exhaust is all titanium. It's one piece. This particular exhaust weighs six pounds. Uh, it's very light. In terms of having it on your car compared to a heavier piece that's made of stainless steel, you do have better weight to power ratio, which is very important in the overall tuning of the car. A lot of people think tuning is sticking the biggest pipe exhaust that you can onto the car. Uh, it doesn't really work out that way. It's kind of like baking. If you make a cake, you don't want too much sugar. You just have to have the right amount of everything. And in result, you'll have a perfectly balanced car that is suitable for you. A lot of times, manufacturers will make uh, stock exhaust for the general public use, which is not really optimal for performance, but it's great for economical use for the general public. However, for those of you that are looking to free up some more power, you can help your engine uh, breathe a little bit better by adding on an aftermarket exhaust. 
This particular exhaust is called the teardrop. The reason why it's called teardrop is due to the shape. If you notice it becomes more narrow as it approaches the uh, piping, but it does help tune the uh, sound quality of your exhaust. This particular exhaust for the RSX is at a 60 millimeter uh, piping, which is optimal for a car such as RSX, four cylinder. This uh, particular exhaust is designed for the Skyline R34 GTR. If you notice the piping, it's much larger. This is 90 millimeter, and it's actually quite optimal to have a larger piping for turbo cars. This particular exhaust was designed by Mr. Yokomaku. He is the founder of Veilside. He is the person responsible for building the race cars that we have. He is regarded as one of the best engine builders in Japan among many of his peers and he uses his expertise to help design parts that could be used on his race cars, but he's designed them for the consumer market. Each of these are deemed to be beneficial in terms of weight savings, power gains, and design. Just uh, shooting the video. Uh, you know, you guys who did this out on the Navy Mole, I don't know if you're one of them, or, but uh, uh, number one, it's not open to the public out okay. here. Uh, number two, we don't appreciate you speeding in the port. All right. And uh, the last time that they had him out on the Navy Mole, the guy started drag racing across the parking lot. Uh, not cool. Okay. okay. You know, we ordinarily don't mind taking pictures, but when you guys abuse the privilege, then you know all right so how long are you going to be here we're going to leave yeah. good enough all right thank you Have very much nice. thanks shown here is a couple of examples of our hoods the hoods are actually made of a different material than our body kits are they're made of fiber reinforced plastic otherwise known as frp 
This particular hood here right here is the Super Hood. It's actually designed to benefit the performance of your car. The bumper down below takes in the cool air. The air feeds through the intercooler and the hot air will be pulled out here as you're coming into motion. It's really beneficial for the performance of the car to run at lower temperatures. As you see right here, this particular hood and all the other hoods that we have, there's a full structural frame placed inside just like stock hoods. Uh, also here with latch. Many of the aftermarket hoods on the market are just a simple fiberglass piece that's been slapped together. Uh, it's, it's actually weighs very little. This particular hood I'd estimate about 10 pounds. Our super hood weighs about 15 pounds compared to the stock hood that weighs 30 pounds. FRP is beneficial to use on hoods and wings. Number one, it is less flexible and it's fairly strong. This is good because a lot of the wind forces being generated during high speeds is uh, a lot of the forces being put onto the hoods and also onto the wings. You don't really want a flexible hood on your car as you're driving down the racetrack. Shown right here is one of our side skirts. Uh, the main difference between our product and our competitors in terms of fiberglass parts is the flexibility. This actual side skirt, I can flex it around. And it's very beneficial to have that uh, because when your car is driving on the road, your car will naturally have a tendency to flex. If you have a rigid piece that's been molded on or rebuilt with fiberglass or a lot of Bondo, it's going to be very heavy, it's going to be very rigid, in the long run it will develop stress cracks because as your car is flexing, your parts will not be flexing with it and therefore stress will be induced upon those parts. Shown right here is our 300Z front bumper. This is the EC1 model. As you can see, it's very lightweight. It uh, features mounting points for your factory turn signals and already has pre-drilled bolt hole locations, uh, which in case many other aftermarket body kits do not have. The reason why they don't have them is because they don't really fit too well. This is what it looks like from Velside. And this is what it looks like painted on the car. I was actually really scared, you know, because I, when I read the script, it was kind of just like, oh, I don't know, this could be bad. But I just, I just, the whole thought of having import cars on the big screen was just so, like, I just wanted to be involved. I had to do it. You know, whether it was good or bad, I mean, for me, it was just like, it is, you know, it's just amazing to, to, you know, just to be a part of the whole thing. I mean, when I saw my, my thing, you know, I, I had read it in the script and I didn't know, I mean, the whole point of that whole sequence is that, you know, every athlete has a, has some sort of ritual, right? Or every sportsman or every, you know, that's like a, it's a general thing you wear. You wear the thing you shirt, do every single time. Do it, sign a cross. And so my character's thing is he's the young kid and, you know, you know, he loves playing video games. So, you know, like Vin Diesel, like, uh, you know, he turned the nitrous on, turned the stereo on. Paul Walker's, you know, his character was the nervous, like, I've got to win. You know, Ja Rule was the cool, calm, collected, looking for girls. And my character was just a video game geek, you know. <laughs> And I, it was really funny to me. I, I thought it was just great comic relief because it was like everyone yeah, it was, was so serious. And then you're just and then there you see playing. This, like, that's little... your character's motivation. Yeah, it's sort of. Yeah. Like, <laughs> where's my motivation come from? <laughs> Rob, where's my motivation come from? Gran Turismo. <laughs> Gran Turismo, man. I don't know why they made me crash with that. They, they they made a whole big thing how they they wanted to make it really realistic, and I think they did a, a decent job without you know making it boring because you know as we know watching two cars go down the drag strip can get pretty boring, boring. Um, you know and so they, they took some liberties and you know tried to make it more exciting in, in, in their in, in a typical Hollywood fashion uh, so the five mile quarter mile yeah <laughs> the 10 minute race <laughs> yeah. the 10 minute race but um it turned out good I don't know you know for me I was just I was just ha happy to be a part of it you know the success of it is just the you know icing on the cake because you know everyone was when they first heard about it, everyone just slammed and I represent the club uh, EFI on Olympic. I've always driven fast, my dad does, my mom does. You know, we always mess around in the streets. 
The interior I have, the leather is custom made, silver and black to match the car. I also have an Eclipse television deck, two 10 inch woofers in the back with the custom sub box. An extant 1000 amp to push those in the back. I have an aluminum dash and uh, I have a couple of uh, standalone items to uh, do my engine management. Right now it's the XS intercooler core and I'm running a, a T63 turbo. I got it because a lot of supers go to the bigger turbos but here in Hawaii you know it's not a lot of room to open up. I wanted a turbo that would put out enough power but still spool up quick enough on the streets. I have an uh, Apex GT spec all stainless three and a half inch exhaust. <laughs> Rob Millen, three and a half inch downpipe. I used to mess around when I was younger, you know, everybody used to street races with their parents' cars and stuff. But I didn't get serious about it until I got here and I met a, a student named Oren, Oren Bivens. He is the one that got me racing at the track. I've had four Supers. I've always loved them since I was about, about 16 when I saw my first MK2. That's when I got into Supers. When I first saw the, the Mark IV, the first time I saw it was a veil side head. The full veil side kit, full color. Once I saw that, I said, that's, that's what I want. That's what I want my Super to be, and that's what I want my Super to look like. My fastest time to date has been 11.7. My highest mile per hour has been 130. Take the car uh, over 700. Today Grip visits Signal Auto.
ップビデオそんなんうちやってへんから帰ってくれ<音楽>ジャパンのスタマジで Drifter X has been heavily modified with Hiroki from Signal Auto talks about drifting an essential suspension setup for drifting. Drifting takes skill and experience, so parts won't really make you a good drifter, but having a good suspension and brake system can really help a lot. It is important to have good quality parts for any serious suspension setup. A complete quality adjustable coilover kit is key to proper drifting. Everyone drives differently. And so it is important that the coilover system is adjustable to your style of driving rather than you adjusting to the coilover system. Make sure to drive for a while with your coilover system before and during adjustments so that you can get a feel for the car and coilover system and adjust it to your needs. Drifting is about losing traction, but traction is important to regain and keep control of your vehicle. To increase traction, good bushings will help you regain and maintain control of your car. What some people don't realize is that controlled drifting has a lot to do with traction or gripping. Changing the arms as well as the bushings makes the car much stiffer, reducing the mushy feel most stock suspensions have. In drifting, having a stiff, controllable suspension is most important. In Hiroki's opinion, nothing looks better than a drift car that's slammed. But remember, when you lower your car, your camber and toe changes significantly. Having good alignment is important to daily driving and drifting as well. Being able to stop the drift is important as well. And so a good brake system is a must. Upgraded calipers, brake pads, and steel braided brake lines make a significant difference in stopping power. For Nissan 240SX with 4 lug and other 4 lug vehicles that can be converted to 5 lug, it is strongly recommended that the hubs be switched out for 5 lug hubs. This way you can use a larger variety of brake systems and you have more lugs to keep your wheel attached to the car. Drifting is all about fun, but it takes a lot of practice and skill. With the right suspension, drifting in any type of motorsport will be much more enjoyable.
Influenced by Japan's street scene, drifting has been popular on Hawaii's mountain roads for years. Drift sessions have started to help enthusiasts keep drifting off the streets, and at the same time allows these drifters to go all out in a safe environment. Justin Kikawa has only been drifting for two years, but has already gained a reputation of being one of the best in Hawaii. I went to my first drift session in November, and I started practicing ever since then at the drift sessions. Um, never really left my car when I was there, so actually I had a lot of track time. Drifting requires a high level of skill. And a lot of people are bad mouthing drifting, saying, you know, it's just nothing but burning out. Drifting is more than just um, burning out, it's like getting a controlled slide, entering a turn. I guess almost faster than the car can handle and then just recovering from that. It takes a lot of practice because... Be prepared to have some damage done to your car. And drifting ain't cheap. We try to find all the used tires we can, like anybody who gives us their old ones, that's what we're using right now. I'm going to keep continuing until I either have no money to get tires or my car is all bust. In the beginning, it's good to get your rear out easily, but you'll be going slower. As you get better, you'd want a little more traction in rear. Keichi Tsuchiya, Katsuhiro Oil, Yoichi Mamura. I always watch them on the option videos and they have the same kind of car I do. So actually that's what I look up to. They're really good drifters. I give credit to those guys like Chris who drives Camaros and drift with that. Like that must be hard to do. I hope it becomes as big as it is in um, Japan. You know, with all those competitions, with um, with the skill level becoming higher and whatnot. Any closing thoughts? Any closing thoughts? Nothing, man. Just, you know, everyone just uh, continue loving cars. And, uh, you know, don't listen to all the hype. And just, you know, the, the one main thing is, like, like we talked about, is that, that binds us all is the love for cars. And I hope that people don't forget that. You know, because when it comes down to it, that's what's more important. It's just for everyone to have fun and be happy and, you know, be in their garage and, you know, tuning their cars and then taking it out and filling the boost and flossing their new kit and wheels and and uh, wish me luck. You know, hopefully everything will work out good. So good luck. Yeah, definitely. And thanks for all the support. Updated. Yeah, I will. Yeah, well, I just want to thank you guys and all the people that have always supported me. I mean, that's what keeps me going. And you know, again, the love, just the love. So don't forget the love. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Thanks, RJ. I know, I can't believe he wants to fucking spend... I told him, I was like, dude, we don't have any money for something like this. Shot caller. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs>
and we're gonna go out, we're gonna drink, we're gonna have a good time watching Grip video. Oh, it's no wonder I wasn't like pulling hard. I had my air conditioning on. Oops, my bad. Motorex takes grip out and gets crazy in the Tommy Kara WRX. Then they take grip out and gets them fucked up. Check it out. What? Tommy Kara has been tuning Subaru since 1994, which brings us to the new Tommy Kara car, the WRX STI. The Tommy Kara WRX STI is a far cry from the factory model. The Tommy Kara car has been heavily modified. Tommy Kara slapped on a stroker kit, bringing the engine from 2 to 2.2 liters. Exhaust gases are expelled faster by a Fujitsubo exhaust system. The rear bumper and front spoiler gives the Tommy Kara car its unique look over the original WRX, and the aluminum GT wing adds the final touch. Brembo brakes and Bilstein suspension help keep the 18-inch Tommy Kara wheels on the pavement, and these custom Tommy Kara seats help keep the driver comfortably in place. Shin Baranek of Night Garage joins Grip to help capture the Tommy Kara WRX in action. I was like, what the hell are you doing? Bitch ass, bitch ass, bitch ass! Two point two stroker kit on this. Go this way. No bad boy. STI. Originally producing two hundred sixty one horsepower at six thousand RPM, the car now puts out three hundred fifty five horsepower at sixty four hundred RPM. So, what's your first impression of this car? At first, I wasn't really thinking too much of this car. I mean, you know, what kind of Subaru do that a Skyline can't? Kind of, I always thought the WRX is kind of like a wannabe Skyline. So I wasn't really that you know, enthusiastic about it coming over, but um, once a couple of people drove it and they're telling me, hey, this thing's pretty cool. And then when I got a chance to drive this thing, I was pretty impressed. It has a lot of good bottom end. It has torque. You know, usually because it's, turbos usually spool up kind of like at 3,000, 4,000 RPM, and then it starts to go, but this thing right off the bat is pretty torquey. It's a cool car. This is the the Tommy Kara, the, the everything Tommy Kara is, the Tommy, the full Tommy Kara campaign car. So it's like from the engine tuning to all the little achacha piece it has in the car, the seats. It's big bling bling dollar stuff. We hope it works, sells here in the states. Producing an assortment of tuned cars as well as original vehicles, the Tommy Kara WRX STI is the first car from the Tommy Kara line to be introduced into the American market. <laughs> What did he say? He said, damn, that's bad. <laughs> you guys are nuts. Fucking okay, shooting these cars, shooting cars, half your body sticking out in the middle of the freeway. Hey, if you <coughs> want to get the shots. That's a shiznit. It's fast. It handles really well. Uh, it puts you at back in the seat pretty good. So, Ken, Vernon, how was your time with uh, Grip Video today? Oh. Absolutely yeah, stupendous. Uh, I cannot... Stupendous or stupid? Stupendous. <laughs> stupendous. It, it, it was stupendous. Such, stupendous. such a positive experience, I cannot even uh, show, show my feelings with words. You didn't have the fucking... Dude, look, you didn't have the shit on. Going, dude. Oh, that's why. You know what? You know what? We got, we got Just it, right? a couple minutes ago, what happened maybe two hours ago had to be stayed off camera. <laughs> I'm afraid. So this is the aftermath. This is what happens after. He's and going back into the Tommy Kara car. He's going back into the Tommy Kara J, J Spec WRX. What the fuck is he doing in there? You know, it's just just good friends, good drinking, good fun, right? Ah, so that's it. So that's it. Uh, and what car is he in? It's a Tommy Kara WRX. He's puking in my Tommy Kara WRX. Someone's here fucking huddled underneath a fucking big rig. <laughs> fucking puking his guts out. At fucking, let me think here. 
fucking, it's like 3 o'clock in the fucking morning. Ten. Nice, Mike. Ten. Yeah. I hear your fucking ass. Uh-huh. <laughs> Jay, I hear you fucking laughing, bitch. The world is your oyster. <laughs> what the fuck is an oyster, dude? I don't even know what the fuck. I know what an oyster is, but I'm Jay all the... Oh, you guys are totally dick, man. I got you and fucking you. Oh, man. So, from the staff of Grip Video, this is another hey, 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 hey. successful night. Fucking over here in the mainland. Fucking harassing all the top tuners of, in sure Cali. So. <laughs> and you're going to see more I shit coming from them. Right well, how the fuck? Later. I'm sure there is going to be more than one unpleasant surprise before we're done. Thank you. 